What's up, you guys? Alright, uh, we got another September 18th uh, recording video here, vlog, whatever. Uh, uh, we are currently westbound on I-44 in Tulsa. Just got past the west end of the, you know, the, four, uh, the 44 and 244 loop. Uh, we're about 10 miles, uh, just you know, just air over 10 miles now from our terminal. Uh, the quick trip and Super 8 now that, that you know, our, the Super 8 that our people stay at is right here off the sector that I just passed. Um, Alright, so we, now we're on our way to the terminal. Uh, tentatively to uh, get this truck dropped off and me into a different truck because as you guys might have seen from my previous videos uh, uh, JCT is not working with me he's working with me on my Peterbilt so and my options are either go elsewhere or get a new truck get in a new truck and I don't have much uh, good uh, good options available uh, being that I'm from California, and that my preference is to least uh, least to own, so only real good option I have here is with, to stay with JCT. So ideally, uh, well, not so ideal, but the best say uh, a case scenario right now, at least you know, as far as uh, not having to worry about what am I getting myself into uh, if I go somewhere else. Really, just stay with JCT and deal with getting. Uh, getting in a brand new uh, truck anyway uh, so if you saw the end of my last video which was supposed to be uh, I was supposed to be deadheading from St. Louis to Siloam Springs Arkansas to drop this trailer in this empty trailer off that I delivered that I used to deliver that load in St. Louis uh, I washed the trailer out, filled it up with reefer fuel, and was going to drop it at Simmons uh, Foods in uh, San Juan Springs. And I was to, I was instructed drop it there, grab trailer 7055, bring it back to the yard with you so we can decommission it, and then I get this truck turned in so it get repaired, and so uh, they could have someone else use it. And they can also get me into a replacement truck. Well, as you might have seen from that video, I missed my turn. Uh, I didn't realize it was a great separated interse intersection that I was looking at until I was already too close to it and overshooting the, the turn that I really needed to make to make the make it onto the, the crossing that I was trying to get to. Uh, end up right. Uh, it's you know. It being dark, I didn't know where I was, uh, where a good spot to turn around was. Uh, I know like I've never been to Salem Springs before, but I'm not that intimately familiar with it. Uh, I ended up just stopping at the Loves there on the west side of town to uh, get myself turned around there. Use the restroom and all that. And what do I know? I, I pull into that parking lot in the fuel island. And I'm looking right at the back of the same trailer that I thought I was supposed to be picking up hooked up to another driver so um, no big deal I mean not, it shouldn't be too big a deal but I mean because he and I are both coming to Sepulpa anyway but my concern is I'm not dead heading 300 plus miles from St. Louis to, uh, um, to Siloam Springs I didn't add another 100 miles of deadhead from Salem Springs back to Zapulpa and not going to get paid for it. You know, that was never communicated to me what, what miles I was going to get paid for or not get paid for on this trip. As far as I'm concerned, I'm bringing a truck back to JCT for them to reuse. So, um, and uh, not to, you know, it's not just for personal reason to get back over the terminal. I don't want that. You know, I don't want to get a new truck. I'd rather stay in mine, but I'm being forced to bring it back. Um, so I don't know what I'm, uh, what I'm, uh, I'm either going to get paid for or not get paid for now. 
And I bought 60 gallons of fuel in Rolla, Missouri. So I didn't have enough to get all the way here with uh, what I had. So um, I had, uh, you know, that's, that's coming up on, uh, that's close to $300 worth of fuel that I, I bought to get over here. And on top of that, you know, the thought of uh, possibly having to spend that much on fuel to bring a truck back to the terminal and not get paid anything on top of it, uh, it kind of irritates me. But, yeah, I don't know what the situation is going to be there. We'll find out when I get to the terminal uh, if, if it's going to get, if this uh, situation is going to get resolved to my liking. Um, if I'm going to be extremely upset if I don't get a dime of pay out of this. If somebody on night shift screwed up and had someone else come uh, go pick the trailer up when I was already set up to get it myself. So, I don't know, we'll see what happens here. Alright, well, we just passed exit 215. The next exit down is uh, 211, which is Highway 33. That will be the exit that our terminal is off of. Um, it's just uh, it's right at 11 o'clock p.m. right now. So all goes as planned, and our people will come in at 8 a.m. tomorrow. So um, my plan is in the uh, first thing in the morning, once they all come in, uh, I'll go talk to Brian Grace. So, well, actually, let me I'm gonna deal with my DM first and see if we can get that issue resolved. And then if it, uh, if it looks like it'll get resolved uh, sufficiently, I'll go talk to Brian Grace, uh, one who handles the truck selection, and uh, see about getting a different truck. Um, if it doesn't, if they don't resolve it where I, I get some kind of compensation out of this, um, I'll, I'll just tell them, you know, you guys can keep your trucks, I'll walk and go somewhere else. but. Then that would be worst case scenario. I'm not going to say it is going to happen, and I don't want you guys getting on any uh, JCT sucks bandwagon just because of this situation. It's a fucked up situation, um, and it's not JCT's fault. It's somebody, uh, some some individuals that are you know, particular, you know, one or two specific individuals who uh, created a screwed up situation. And you know, we'll see how it gets resolved, though, and that'll determine. Um, how good or bad it's going to be. Alright, uh, as I say, they're, they usually are pretty good about working with, like, taking care of drivers, you know, in bad situations like this, so, you know, I, um, I'm optimistic that it'll be resolved to my life, uh, to, uh, to at least some degree of liking. So we'll see how it goes, but, you know, let's say if, uh, worst case scenario, I'm just gonna, you know, I, I could just get to the point where I'll tell them they keep their trucks and I'll walk and go somewhere else, find somewhere else to drive. I don't even wanna, I don't even care to drive auto shift as it is, so. Um, I mean, I have motives to stay and I have motives to leave. I don't want to badmouth them. It's just, I mean, you know, it's, what's ideal for me? Uh, there's got to be some compromise here, and I feel like there's, you know, so far there's not been any compromise at all as far as my Peterbilt's concerned. And uh, add in this situation here, it's just, it, it's got me in a tizzy and wondering now, uh, it's, I say it might not amount to anything at all. It could be uh, could end up res uh, resolving uh, positively, but at the same time, it become it's it's become a stressful situation for me. And I don't I don't like uncertainty. Uh, the uncertainty, and I I can tell you firsthand from my my health experiences, my medical problems, that uncertainty is the absolute worst. I had Hodgkin's disease back in 2002, or I got diagnosed with it, which is a, Hodgkin's disease is a form of lymph node cancer. 
I had to go through chemo and radiation treatments for that. But before I even knew what it was, you know, I was going through all the, you know, I was talking to seeing my doctor, getting tested, uh, checked out, all this and that kind of stuff. That was actually the most stressful part of the entire situation. You know, wondering what was going on. I had lumps in my neck and they weren't going away. And, uh, you know, normally they say if it's a viral infection or something, it should go away after, uh, a, uh, within a month. But it didn't go away, so it had me wondering. Uh, you need to make sure you stop it, uh, even though there's no actual uh, limit line, because the uh, cops who, uh, it's a pool club PD or whoever actually does hang out here watching for people who uh, run that stop sign. But anyway, yeah, going through all that process, getting, uh, like, having to go through surgery and all that, and you know, not even knowing what's going on there. That was uh, no doubt more stressful to me than, you know, the day I found out it was, uh, cancer. You now when the doctor, I went back a week after I had the surgery to get one of the lymph nodes removed and they biopsied it. Uh, the doctor didn't even have the balls to tell me that it was cancer. He just said it came back abnormal and uh, that it came back, uh, that they were, uh, it was inconclusive. They uh, were not, they were not able to determine if it was a certain variant of uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma or a certain variant of non hodgkins lymphoma, both uh, both of them being uh, lymph node cancers. This right here is probably the uh, 7055, the trainer that I was originally sent to grab. Uh, I bet you anything, that, yeah, it sure is. Because he had left Love's not too long before I did, so. Alright, but, yeah, anyway, once I had the, once I knew what was going on there, I had a much better idea what to expect. And, you know, actually, well, I was a little in shock at first when I first found out about it, but once I, once I got home, I that also, um, I, I called my mom and told her about it on my way home from finding out about it, and she was more shocked and having a hard time with it than I did, but once I got home, I started researching what, everything I could about Hodgkin's lymphoma, and especially the particular strain of it that I had, and once I figured out that uh, the survival rate, 15-year survival rate on it was very high, or actually the five-year survival rate was like 94%. The 15-year rate was, I think, like 65%. So it was like not great, but not bad. Um, you know, so I had a, at least some more reason to be uh, more confident that I'd be okay. A very uh, Much more often than not, people survive that form of cancer. So it's just... At that point, how was I going to be affected by the chemo and radiation? Uh, otherwise, I had kind of the mentality, I'm going to kick this thing's ass. And uh, I had, you know, yeah, I was getting really confident and cocky, whatever. And they got, all right, we're good. Um, it's just a matter of how uh, not fun this chemo and radiation process was going to be for me. And, well, but we'll get through it. Yeah, I was still going to be alive is what I was, the way I was looking at it as. Not knowing what the hell was going on was so much more stressful than that. And this is the same thing going on here. I don't know what's gonna, what the future holds over the next day or two. So, uh, you, know, you know, any number of, it's kind of like choose your own adventure kind of thing. But the only thing is some, you know, there are some other hands in there that are going to uh, play a role in which path I take. So... I don't get to, uh, I, I don't feel like I'm going to be completely choosing my own adventure. I'm going to feel like some, uh, some what ifs, you know, or not what ifs, but ifs that are not, you know, that I need answers to, uh, could affect what ends up happening from here. All right, so, uh, we'll get, yeah, I'm going to get parked here and, uh, 
tomorrow morning, you know, when, when we have daylight and they're and they're in in the morning, we'll uh, I'll, I'll get these uh, issues resolved or worked on, addressed, whatever. Uh, once our once the staff comes in and uh, I'll figure out if I'll be uh, signing for a new truck or if I'll be departing for some other pastures. We'll figure it out though. Like I say, ideally, I, I like to stay here. I like it here overall. Good company. Uh, that's that's Brian David's truck. I didn't realize that was him. I'm gonna go shake his truck because I just saw him getting out of it. So. All right, guys. Uh, we're gonna drop this empty. And we'll find a spot to park, a uh, place to park. Uh, Bob Tell Lot looks like it's yeah, know, a little on the full side, but there might be some spots open over here that I can put it in. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of uh, trucks parked over here and over to the side of the driver lounge. Uh, we're not really supposed to be parked over there, but there's too many trucks to. Too many trucks here um, that I'm kind of wondering if any of those are. No, those, those are usually drivers. Uh, drivers, uh, yeah, using their trucks and parking there so they can stay close to the lounge for restroom or laundry or whatever else. All right, with this freaking well thing, this drilling well thing here, I'm gonna have to go around the side of it. over there but ah right, well I'm done with this empty for now so uh, and I definitely won't be uh, if even if I do use this empty again uh, definitely won't be with this tractor come on stop I don't want to go into drive mode all right ready line is over here yeah there's a bunch of trucks over here are these all those are not New, are they? Those, uh, some of those have older, older deer guards on them, from what I can tell. I don't know. These ones, this one's not even badged, so either it's a brand new one or it's one that's uh, post lease. I don't know, I'll figure it out. Probably screw. Uh, check them out during daylight. Um. And you say, well, I'm going to get the issue resolved, and uh, all goes well. Uh, we'll check out one of those uh, in a show and tell section. Now I'll watch them have a conniption when I uh, send my Macro 14 in to drop this trailer. Like, what are you doing? You're supposed to be ready. I'm like, yeah, uh, well, might as well push my PTA out because I'm not picking up again unless it's with a new truck and not with this loaner. I keep forgetting where this utility light switch is. I'm not used to it. Alright guys, we got ourselves a new truck, unfortunately. Not really what I was looking for, but uh, kind of slim pickings. So I'll kind of show you guys what I got here. This will be a silver 2023 Cascadia. Uh, the driver actually, uh, he was there at the motel room on Monday. And uh, he quit yesterday, turned it in. I saw him bring, uh, checking out. Uh, 
This is one of these Hearst box spec trucks. Black grill, black deer guard on it. Uh, really good shape here. Only had 17,000 miles on it. Uh, black sides are charcoal black uh, side skirts. Actually has duals on it. Uh, it has the higher airbags on it. it. Has a carrier APU. I know a lot of drivers don't like the carriers, but I I'm used to carrier. I'm perfectly fine with it. So uh, just good take take care of the stuff, and you now there shouldn't be any problems with it. All right, it has a new truck smell to it. We run it on Qualcomm, uh, even though our new, our brand new trucks are getting geotabs instead of Qualcomm. Uh, it does at least have a load scale gauge like I like. I could really give two shits about that one there. It tells how much air pressure I was going to the brakes. Um, only thing I don't like has lane keeping uh, assist. Lane keep assist. That's what that means. There's a little sensor over on the right side. You know, uh, underneath the, the back door right there on the outside uh, that'll try to keep you in your lane uh, and I guess it turns you can deactivate it but it turns back on after 10 minutes or so from what I was told God, I had them put in a pillow top mattress here we needed another mattress at my house for my son anyway so we went ahead and took out the you know the because I already had my I already have my mattress that was in my Peterbilt uh, sitting at the house, so I told my wife just go ahead and use that one for my son And I'll get a new pillow top here. So got another mattress up here just in case I do decide to uh, Become a trainer or maybe have one of my boys on the truck with me or something Otherwise in interior Set up very similar to the loaner truck that had just turned in uh, One Is uh, the refrigerator is a little bit bigger not a lot, but it is. Not bad looking there. I can definitely hold more in there than normally. One thing I did find weird was that uh, the inverter is mounted down there. It's kind of a weird spot. I've got the tires changed there. But there are a couple of... Uh, I still got the outlet there. Uh, one tens right there. Not not a shitload of room here because the APU equipment, but there's still something to work with there. Um, I will have to wonder about putting a broom in there like I used to be able to do. I don't see that there's room to have my broom go across like like I was able to do when both my Peterbilt and in the the lunar truck. Alright, not too much here. Really nothing else special going on here. Uh, it's an auto shift, unfortunately, but gotta do what I gotta do. Um, no matter what, I was gonna not, not get what I wanted. Ideally, a blue KW with the Cummins and Duels would have been uh, great. But... Uh, yeah, there's only one here, but it has super singles, and someone else, uh, one of my friends already claimed it, so. Uh, this will be what it'll be in. I just signed for it earlier today, so or this afternoon, so. Now I'm going to get it over there to the front of the building and get uh, my personal stuff into there. Uh, I got three boxes sitting in uh, the storage, the Connex that was over there. Uh, Get all that stuff put in here as well and I'll be ready to roll again um, I'm gonna have to improvise with the interior camera shots like when I'm uh, when I'm vlogging till I get a probably get a new mount for my interior camera I'll see if I can get the one uh, the mount off of the other windshield but I kind of have doubts I'll have an easy time getting it off there I'll, I'll find the truck see if I can get it out that way I continue on um, Gonna put my three-way camera in. That's easy to do. I just, you know, in fact, I'm gonna show my friend who's uh, interested in getting a three-camera system. Um, how that's all set up. So we'll be ready to roll here with at least exterior cameras, both on the front and rear uh, rear cameras, most likely before we leave here with this truck. So 
anyway, meanwhile, I'm going to head over to the, the building, get everything I can brought into here, get settled in, whatever, and uh, see what happens. Um, don't really expect to be leaving here until tomorrow morning. Kind of sound like there's uh, kind of light on loads, plus I've been up all day, so probably would be best to uh, load tomorrow, but told my DM I might even be ready to roll this evening as long as it has some time to work with on it, so we'll see. Um, Definitely be plenty busy with stuff to post for you guys, all right? All right, guys, we are uh, got all of our cameras hooked up, including the Garmin, which is what I'm looking at. Yeah, excuse that annoying thing there. It's, I think it has something to do with me not having my uh, seatbelt on or something. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I think it's just a seatbelt warning, uh, and then it goes off after a few, but uh, we're going to go around the building to a particular empty trailer, uh, which I forgot to even look up. Uh, I got some info on which trailer to grab. We're going to be dead heading down to Oklahoma City to pick up a uh, Hobby Lobby load. Got two drops up in Northern California. So that'll be what'll be on uh, on tap for us next. Um, one thing I noticed with this truck, because there's the there's nuances to figure out. Um, I had to put this back on because I took it off to hook my uh, my exterior my rear view mirror cameras up. But there we go. Uh, when I first started driving this out of the bobtail lots. Holy crap, man. Uh, there was like no effort at all to turn the steering wheel. It was so easy that I thought there was, uh, I thought that uh, the steering linkage was disconnected or something. I was like, it shouldn't be this easy. What the hell is wrong with this thing? But no, it actually turns that easily. Like, I, I'm not, I wasn't used to that. I was, I was used to feeling at least a little bit of resistance there. Uh, and then hopefully we'll be able to. Ah, shit. I think I accidentally threw myself a drive mode. Yeah, I did. Oh, well. I don't have to run too hard. Uh, well, I do want to run 600 plus today. I haven't. Yeah, I woke up this morning, so that'll be a concern, but. Never, well, shit, I'm already in driveline, so screw it. Let's go ahead and get over here and get hooked up. It was a six-something number trailer. Um, I expect that it'll probably be over here, but we'll find out in a minute. Another little nuance is uh, I don't see a switch here for power door locks. So that's the only thing that's weird about it, uh, really to me, uh, let's see, six, seven, four, three, I know it's a six something number, I'll have to probably stop and take a look. Then I can get off, uh, get out of, come on. Don't need to be burning two minutes of drive time here. Come on! Ah. Alright, so I'm going to have to reject all these drive lines since uh, this say truck was in shop status. Alright, guys, we're going to be uh, picking up 6748, which is right over here on the left. Now, one other nuance is uh, this driver's side rear view mirror is some kind of like a waviness to it, but I don't know if it's just the fact that I got crud on there that's causing it to be uh, difficult to, to see straight, because it looks like it's not flat. It looks like it's got kind of waves in it or something. Dropped the uh, 
got my airbags. I mean, this thing being a Freightliner though, now once I get settled in here and uh, maybe have room there, I might actually be willing to entertain training other people too. Alright, let's raise the bags back up. I'm going to have to re, uh, drop the landing gear to uh, get it where I want. Brake air supply pressure low. Okay, I need you out of the way. I want my... I couldn't tell my suspension was raised back up. That's, still got to get used to that. Okay, I'm starting to get an advantage, uh, impression that I can use this air ride switch to my advantage. Because you can raise or lower and above or below the normal ride height. And I got it raised and the landing gear is very clearly off the ground. So I just go ahead and back into it now. It is definitely on the fifth wheel. I, I, looked, you know, I was looking right at it. Good. And I can just hit the switch there to should be able to hit it one more time. Now I'm confused. Damn it, this this phone's about to die and I got no way to hook it up. Uh, I mean, I got, I got a 110 plug back there, but it runs off the APU and I got, um, 12 volts, but I got no 12 volts to plug my phone into, and it's about to die. Alright guys, we are ready to check out of here, or get out of here. Uh, let's see if this thing's charting out. Let me plug it in over here. I might have better luck with it there. I might have to sit and wait for it though. Alright, so I ended up uh, just trying to help the guy over here in the truck a couple spots over from me. He's new to the company and uh, he's going to go pick up his first load tomorrow. He was having trouble with his tri pack um, APU. Unfortunately, I don't have really any experience with their, those APUs. Um, I've yeah, you know, I've used them before in the winter time. You know, I've had a truck that I've been in a truck that had one of those in the winter time, but I'm not really super knowledgeable about how they operate on the um, you know when you want AC and all that. So I'm like, and it doesn't seem like it wants to run. So I'm like, hey, shit, man. I wish I could help you, but I, don't, I honestly don't know. Uh, don't know uh, how that thing works or maybe it's we're doing it correctly and it's just not working properly I don't know but yeah and I, got, I got to explain to him how to use the enforcer lock you know, how they want it on uh, how the how to go about using the thermometers that he was given uh, that's my buddy Steve right there about to head roll, get rolling here. That's it? Yep, that's it. I, got, I already got a load to go pick up. Uh, I'm going to go pick up at Hobby Lobby. 
Oh, are you? Yeah. Heading out? Going to Fairfield and Rockland. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you talk to them about uh, training? Not yet. They, I know John and them were busy, and I was. I have too much going on, so I figured yeah, I'll talk to them eventually. This is 23. Yep. What's different about this one and then like? Uh, black grill, black deer guard, duels. Yeah, dual dual tires. What? Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, I don't see a power door lock switch, but so I don't see a power door lock switch. So all I have is the window up and down, uh, mirror heat, and then the flat mirror adjustment stuff. And I got a door lock. Oh, I the door locks there, but I don't know if I have a power lock switch. I don't see one. And I've kind of been uh, even looking. Oh, your gas tank is further up too. Yeah. Yeah, I was like the ones that are behind the, the cabbage it's center. It's gray instead of black. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's another one. Uh, hang on. It's more room it's back a, here, though. It's a fixed fifth wheel position, too. And then, yeah, uh, oh. see the mud flaps? Huh? Yeah, you see the mud flaps also? Those are oh, different. Oh, they're the up here. Yeah. We got more room back here, though. Yeah, well, I'm used to my feet, though, so... Alright, uh... Okay, we get rolling out to the guard shack here. And call this one a day. We'll have a new video for you guys uh, when we get over to uh, we go over to uh, Oklahoma City to pick up our, our Hobby Lobby though. in this truck works really really good of course it better it's a brand new truck it's only been uh, the previous driver only was here for about two months before he quit yesterday you know uh, I want to make sure make sure the guy in the car shack can see the truck number and all that kind of stuff So, uh, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed the little uh, tour here. I know it was kind of quick, but uh, yeah, I know there's plenty on the front end of this that, that I talked about earlier. So, uh, we'll let you guys go. Let's say we'll have another video for you guys when we get to Oklahoma City and pick up um, that load there. Uh, it's good for pickup tonight at 2200. Um, it's 1842 here now so yeah it's not gonna be too long before pickup time uh, before I get there anyway so uh, first drop is due in Fairfield California on the 24th and I think 845 I don't know, 830 or some some odd time in the morning uh, should be should be time to work with there so all uh, right we'll see you guys um, in Oklahoma City right thanks a lot we'll see you guys then